Okay, so we are going to look at forces with motion analysis, practice problem number one, and it reads, my kids like to push each other down the hallway in the laundry basket, so this is that one we did in class. When Zachary's in the basket, he has a total mass of 30 kilograms, trees can get him going at 4 meters per second. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the laundry basket and the carpet is 0.1. The coefficient of static friction between the laundry basket and the carpet is 0.3. If it takes trees two and a half seconds to get Zachary moving from rest to four meters per second, how large of a push is she exerting? All right, so we want to know how large of a push. That's a force. So we're going to start with the force analysis process. So the object. The object experiencing the force, that's Zach, in the laundry basket. In our force analysis, there's our laundry basket, there's Zachary sitting in the laundry basket. All right. Now we want to look at those interactions. So we'll identify the interactions, Zachary, in that laundry basket. Well, what forces are exerted on him? What is he interacting with? First, we have the force of gravity. So that's between two objects. Zach and the Earth. All right. We can develop our free body diagram at the same time we're exploring our interactions. So we have the force of gravity, which is mg, which is equal to the weight. So we want to keep reminding ourselves of those three things. Another interaction. Well, he's sitting on the ground. So we have a normal force interaction between Zach and the ground. And typically, the normal force, if we're squishing the molecules as he's sitting, that is going to be in the upward direction. And we might want to start thinking about how these two arrows compare. If I think about the rest of the forces acting on the object right now, I don't think there's going to be anything vertically. So I might think, all right, well, we're not raising, we're not changing motion up or down. Those two arrows are probably, if they're the only two involved, those two arrows will be the same length. Right? Other interactions. Well, Therese is pushing him, so we have the force of his sister, and that is between Zach and Therese. And I didn't really identify it yet in the picture, but if I think about his motion moving to the right, then Therese is probably pushing him to the right. Okay? And the problem indicates there's friction present, and so we have the force of friction between Zach and the ground. And we have to decide, is this kinetic friction or static friction? Both are given. Coefficients are both given. What situation are we in? Well, Zach's moving. He's sliding. So this is going to be kinetic friction. I've indicated that motion is going to be to the right. I mentioned that just previously. So kinetic friction is going to oppose that motion. It should be to the left. Now, I don't think there's any other forces acting in the right or the left direction, so I might want to think about, kind of start thinking about how those two forces should compare. And if she's starting him from rest and getting him moving, that means he is, in fact, accelerating to the right. Now, I'm not going to put this acceleration arrow anywhere near my free body diagram. It's not an extra force. But if his acceleration is to the right, the rightward forces should be bigger than the leftward forces. There's only two in this case. So the force of tree should be bigger than the frictional force. All right, so I have my four forces. In the force analysis, we then identify the forces, number them, and separate them into horizontal and vertical components. So I'll just number these four forces, one, two, three, four. And then I will separate them into their horizontal and vertical components. So force one, that's our force of gravity. It's just pointing down, nothing horizontally. It's pointing down, so I have that negative, and its magnitude is the force of gravity. Number two is the force Therese exerts. She's to the right, so that's a positive force by Therese, nothing vertically. The normal force is compressing the molecules down the laundry basket, so it's exerting a force in the upward direction. So that is positive and in the upward direction. And then force number four is our frictional force. It's pointing to the left. It's kinetic friction, 
nothing in the vertical direction. So we've identified our forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. Now we're going to apply Newton's second law to both directions. And Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces horizontally are going to equal the mass times the horizontal acceleration. And the sum of the forces vertically are going to equal the mass times the vertical acceleration. Now, the object that we're interested in the motion is in the horizontal dimension. So we're going to examine the horizontal forces. We're going to sum those forces up. I have zero plus the force that Therese exerts, which was positive, plus zero minus or plus a negative force of kinetic friction. And that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the horizontal direction. All right, well, again, I'm interested in what force did trees have to exert? What is this force of trees? So if I solve for the force of trees, I bring the kinetic friction to the other side. I end up with the mass times the acceleration in the horizontal direction plus the kinetic frictional force. Okay, well, I have some information that I can input into this relationship. So I have the force of trees, that's again what I'm looking for. And that's going to equal my mass, well that was given as 40, 30, 30 kilograms. The acceleration of, uh, I don't know the acceleration. We're going to leave that as the acceleration. Plus, well I'm given the coefficient of friction, I'm not given the frictional force. We want to remember that the frictional force is equal to mu times n. And I'm given mu. It's kinetic, so I'm going to use the kinetic mu, which was 0 0.1, times n, times the normal force. We don't have the normal force from the horizontal direction because the normal force acts in the vertical direction. So maybe I can get that normal force from my vertical force relationship. Well, the vertical force is equal mass times acceleration in the vertical direction. The object's not changing its motion up or down, so this column is going to equal zero. So I have this little barrier there, minus the force of gravity, plus zero, plus the normal force, plus zero, is going to equal zero. So I know that my normal force equals the force of gravity. So um, the force of gravity is m times g. My mass is 30 times 9.8. And I find that my normal force is equal to what is my normal force? 2, 1, 2, 30 times 9.8, which I don't have right now, but let's put it up into this relationship. I don't have a calculator with me, so I have equals 0 0.1 times n, 30 times 9.8. That's my n. And I find out that the frictional force is equal to 29.4. So this must have been 294 newtons. If 0.1 times 294 is 29.4. So that is my frictional force. So I can put that down here, so 29.4 in my relationship but I still need the acceleration horizontal to get the force that Therese exerts. Hmm, I can't get that through forces, but if I need acceleration, I can look to kinematics. Remember, forces cause changes in motion, and changes in motion can describe motion, and our kinematics describes motion. So let's look at the kinematics of this situation. Well, when we have kinematics, we need to identify our initial and final. So we still have the same object, Zach. The motion that he experiences from rest, and it ends when we get to four meters per second. Well, in our kinematics, we have to identify the world. So if this is our picture, let's identify the origin at the start of Zach, at where Therese starts pushing him. So, we make our list. Initial and final positions, initial and final velocities, accelerations, and time. 
Our initial position is zero when he starts from rest. I don't really know where he ends up. Our initial velocity, the problem says we start at zero meters per second. And she gets him going to four meters per second. I don't know the acceleration. And it tells us that it takes 2.5 seconds to do that. So I know the time. Now the whole reason for going to kinematics was to get acceleration. That is our variable of interest. So what equation am I going to use? I have those two. Well, I have velocity information. I don't have position information. So I'm going to use that. So V final is equal to V initial plus my acceleration times time. That's the base equation. V final is 4. V initial is 0. Acceleration, I don't know. It stays its variable. And time is 2 and a half seconds. So solving for my acceleration, I find that my velocity is 1.6, I'm sorry, my acceleration is 1.6 meters per second squared. So that's my acceleration and I can use that in for my force relationship. It's the same acceleration, it's the acceleration that causes the forces. So I'm just going to rewrite that equation, make it a little bit easier to read. We have the force atrice, that's what we want to know. Remember was equal to 30 times the acceleration in the horizontal direction, the one I just figured out, plus 29.4. So I'm going to use my acceleration that I just determined. And we see that the force that Trees exerts is equal to 30 times 1.6 plus 29.4. And our acceleration, or sorry, our force that Trees exerts is equal to 77.4 newtons. So that's how much she has to push in order to get Zachary to get to four meters per second in two and a half seconds. All right, so how do we approach this problem? The problem is asking for the force, so we look at forces. That identifies our objects, looks at the interactions, free body diagram from those interactions, separating our forces into horizontal and vertical motion because forces independently affect motion in those independent directions. Identifying each of those forces in those directions. Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces horizontally gives us that acceleration horizontally. The sum of the forces vertically is related to the acceleration vertically. We're interested in that acceleration hor or that force horizontally, so we're going to focus on our horizontal forces. Adding those up, we find that we need help with the frictional force and we need help with our acceleration. So we started with the frictional force, knowing that that frictional force is related to that ground interaction and that's also in the vertical direction, that normal force. So we went back to our list. Our vertical forces, well, they're not changing up and down, so the sum of those forces is equal to zero. Sum of the force equals to zero tells us our normal force in this case is equal to the force of gravity. That was related, that was equal to 294 newtons. And we find that our frictional force is 29.4 newtons. But I still need that acceleration in the horizontal direction. But I have some kinematics information that will help me get there. So that force is causing the kinematics behavior. And so I go after my kinematics analysis solving for that acceleration and then using that acceleration in my force analysis to find out how much Trees has to push to get Zach to move at four meters per second in two and a half seconds. All right, a lot of steps linking forces with acceleration. Good job.